Welcome. In this class, we're going to spend most of our time learning about the relationship between Euclidean geometry and pre-industrial design techniques, particularly as they relate to furniture design. We'll learn that there are many benefits to designing furniture in this way, made up of components with sizes that are all rationally related to one another. Such designs can easily be scaled up or down to fit the needs of the space you'll put it in or to fit your personal needs and fit your body. This approach also has benefits that you'll see when actually building furniture. In particular, it allows you to accurately and repeatedly transfer dimensions to the material you're building from without needing to make uh, precise measurements or any numerical computations. However, we're already getting ahead of ourselves to begin seeing what pre-industrial design is and why it's important and why you should use it. We should start with an example. Suppose you wanted a small stool for sitting. Sure, you could order one from a retailer specializing in flat packed, ready to assemble with the aid of easy to follow instructions. European furniture with hipster friendly Viking sounding names. That stool is going to break your heart. It'll probably be a little short or a little too tall for you. Not quite the right color. And it's going to fall apart before it should. You should design your own and build it. It'll be better than most of what you can buy, even if you've never designed or built anything before. You just have to take your time and care. So about that stool, let's pick a height. You can put your ruler away for now and just grab a stick. For a sitting stool, a good overall height is right about the level just below your kneecap measured from the floor. So mark it on the stick, put it away, and forget about it for now. That'll be the height of our stool. It doesn't really matter what it is in inches, centimeters, or furlongs. It's going to be the height of your stool, and every dimension of every component in that stool is going to have a size that's rationally related to that height. So what's this mean? We could, for instance, choose the overall width of the stool to be in a four to three ratio with the height. This means that if you divided the height into three equal pieces, the width is going to be divided up into four pieces, all equal to these three that you've divided the height into. That's what we mean when we say that the height of this stool is going to be in a four to three ratio with its width. So let's start designing this stool by accurately laying out a rectangle with this width to height ratio and put the design elements of our stool in it. Now, as I go through this process, Think of it as just a demonstration of the pre-industrial design techniques we're going to eventually learn in this course. There's really no need to understand why or how I'm doing the things that I'm doing, other than that I hope that they pique an interest in how tools of geometry, like a compass and a straight edge, can be used to accurately set up your designs. I'll use some other tools as well, like this layout square. And I'm just going to get started. So I said, I'm going to pick four to three ratio that's going to exist between the width and the height of this stool. So I'm just going to lay out a baseline. Going to lay out a vertical line that is square to that baseline. Now 
I'm going to mark out three steps. along the height and then four the same size along the width that lays out this four to three aspect ratio of a rectangular box that I'm eventually going to draw My stool designer. Stin that line a little bit. So there's my accurate four units wide by three units high box. It's kind of cool in my barn today, so I'm going to keep drinking the coffee. Now, as I said, all of the components of this stool are going to be rationally related to the, the height. So, so far I've divided the height into three equal pieces. I'm going to divide this third into five equal pieces. Now, if I was trying to take my time and be careful for this design, I would get out my compass and mark off equal steps. But speed and concept is more important to me than accuracy right now. So I'm going to eyeball it. One, two, three, four, five equal steps. And there's the other one. That step size over here. And the reason I did that is that that's going to allow me to draw in the front view the top of the stool. And now we see that the thickness of the top of the stool is 1 15th of the overall height. To do this, I'm going to, use, I'm going to go a little bit for accuracy and use a slightly thinner piece of chalk. This will work better if I do. Okay, so I've got the top. In. Now I want to take that same distance, 1 15th of the height. I'm going to measure it and transfer it with my compass here. Accurately as I can, which with this compass, admittedly, isn't that accurate. I want to transfer it horizontally. And from that corner, and and from that corner. And I want to do it again. I'm going to do the same thing up here. Now I'm going to lightly draw vertical lines that are going to mark where the legs of this stool are. Lightly because I'm going to have to erase part of this later. And I don't want to have to work too hard to do it. I'm going to step down one, two, three of those one fifteenth steps of the height. So I'm going to copy that, that distance with my compass. I'm going to mark it over here as well. And that's where I'm going to lay out a horizontal piece. It's called a stretcher. I'm going to span from here to here. I'm going to erase this part. 
that I drew earlier. I'm going to draw one more horizontal piece like that. Also, three fifteenths of the height of the stool wide. I'm going to do it from this point right here. And yeah, it looks like I'll have to use my square to project that line over. That's okay. Speed over accuracy for now. So it's a little hard to see because my lines are light, but I'm going to darken in the important ones now just by freehand. But I have got the front elevation view of a proportionally designed stool now. some details and I'm going to erase some of the layout lines that formed the rectangle that bounded this stool design in a little bit but for now let's imagine some other views so I've drawn a front elevation view of the stool, um, but I need to have a top plan view and a side elevation view as well. So to do that, I'm going to extend this baseline a little bit further over. Let's draw another vertical for the bounding box of the side elevation view of this stool. Mark off the top. All right. And it is still divided up into three equal pieces. But now what, how wide should the side elevation view be? We can, we can just make a decision here. And maybe we'll set it to be two of these equal divisions wide. So I'll step that off after copying that dimension. One, two. And I'll project this line over along the top. All right, my tools are starting to get a mess. I'm dropping them. One, two. Okay, there's my bounding box that is two units wide to three high, whereas this one, remember, had been four units wide to three high. All right, and I need to figure out how I'm going to fill in the design aspects of this stool in this box. So, start with the top, which remember was 1 15th thick, 1 15th of the height thick. So I just eyeballed it because again, I'm going for speed over accuracy this time. figure out what the side of these legs are going to look like. And 
When I was thinking through this design earlier, I thought what I could do is take this 1 15th distance that we've been using, mark it in at the top, then imagine that these sides of the stool, it's just a big tapered sheet, it starts narrow here at the top, but goes all the way down to the bottom left corner. And this one tapers all the way down to the bottom right corner. Now once again, I'm going to take this 1 15th distance, step it in, step it in. Now I'm going to cut some, just to, for visual relief and also for some stability, I'm going to cut part of a circular arc between those two pieces. And there's a number of ways that we can size it. We'll learn more about that later. I am running out of chalkboard down there though, so... Okay. I'm going to go about... the distance. of other components more clear about what's going on here. This horizontal brace, this stretcher that's sitting under the top, that's going to be inset. I'm just freehanding because frankly I'm worried about losing, running out of time on my, my memory card. <laughs> so there's the these are the ends of this, this stretcher. And then over here, in the metal, I'll just freehand it as well. That stretcher, horizontal brace between the two legs, comes through the face of this board. All right, so that's more or less what the side elevation view of this is going to look like. Now it's time for me to darken in the lines that stay. I'm going to start erasing some of the ones that don't. This is a brand new chalkboard. I just built it, painted it with that black chalkboard paint last night. So until it breaks in a little bit, it is going to be a little bit of a bear to erase. So I hope things stay visible. Design emerges. Now, last thing. I'll just step up a little bit here. Hopefully, I can make this work. Got to do a top plan view, which is really just going to be a rectangle. Hopefully, I can reach high enough. It is four units wide. By two high. Now let's get that other chalk for this. Now 
this set. All this is going to be is the rectangle that represents the four by two unit high. Oh, didn't go high enough. Oh, really didn't go high enough. I'll have to extend those. Anyway, they're the top of the Like maybe I need a stool. Close enough. Four wide, two deep. And that, kind of quickly, is how you would typically lay out, proportionally, uh, a, a design for a simple piece of furniture, in this case just a, a small sitting stool. We could scale the design up or down as small as or as large as we want because all of the components are proportionally or rationally related to each other. Typically, if I was going to build this, I would make sure the height from the top of the stool to the floor comes in just about below my kneecap, measured straight down to the floor when I'm standing straight up. So we've built, just in review, we built a front elevation view, a side, elevation view, afraid that might not be readable, and a plan. All related, all using the same basic modular dimension, and all proportionally related to each other, all rationally related to each other. So, after watching this design emerge, uh oh, here goes my tools. After watching this design emerge, stay. You might have some questions and uncertainties, and that's okay. For instance, some, some good ones could include, you know, how, how do I lay out rational relationships between component dimensions? How do I do that thoughtfully and carefully? Why choose one rational relationship over another one? Why did I use a four to three ratio for width to height, or a four to two for width to depth, or two to three for depth to, to height? Why did I choose those? Um, how do I make lines intersect at square corners? Obviously I used a square, but what is that? How do I know that my square is actually squared? What do I do when it's not? How do I subdivide a segment accurately? You saw me do the, this height, I subdivided it into three units. How does that work? Why does that work? How did this curve at the base work? How did I make that choice? How did I design it so that it, it looked the way that it did? then why, why would we take this approach with compass and straight edge and maybe a square of design at all? Why not use AutoCAD or Google SketchUp or I guess it's Trimble SketchUp now. So these questions and others like them are the point of this class. We will get there, but we're going to have to lay a geometric foundation and we're going to go back almost 2,300 years to do that, to the source of, of, uh, of geometry, to Euclidean geometry. We're not going to look at all of it, but we are going to work with a pretty good chunk, an important chunk. Um, so in, in the next installment in this series of videos, we'll begin looking at Euclid's elements. This is often said to be the first real mathematics textbook. And we're going to start with the definitions and postulates and common notions of book one of the elements. This is going to give us a common vocabulary and a set of assumptions about geometry so that we can develop our design techniques using this vocabulary and assumptions. That way there'll be no ambiguity between us in terms of what we're talking about. It's not exactly an easy way to start, but it's going to be worth it. And so I hope you'll join me on the next several installments of this series. Thank you.